Welcome to Greta's senior exhibition. Um, what will take place is she'll do a presentation and then we'll have clarifying questions. After that, we'll ask the audience to step outside and then the panel will deliberate. And then we'll bring, we'll ask Greta to step outside as well. And then we'll bring her back in and we'll talk to her. And then you won't be allowed to come back. We don't, we don't want you coming back. Okay? So, Greta? It's all yours. Okay. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Greta, and this is my senior ex. My essential question is how will learning self defense help me when dealing with authority? This is just kind of a quick overview of what we're going to go over. Uh, I'm going to go over my prior thoughts on Senior X, my original question, how it's changed, my prior knowledge, the process I went through, challenges I faced, uh, what I learned, so what, and my conclusion. Uh, so this GIF pretty much sums up my prior thoughts on Senior X and how well I thought it would go for me. <laughs> I'm really glad somebody laughed because I had a little like in case no one laughs on the back of my card <laughs> thing. <laughs> okay, um, so my thoughts on Senior X were very dark. I was not looking forward to it at all. I did it this first semester just because I kind of wanted to get it over with. Um, I was pretty terrified just of failing, uh, of it being a huge train wreck. I was just so worried. And then I realized, what am I even doing with my life if I can't even handle like this little project? How am I gonna have like a car loan and go to college and have a mortgage and own a house? Like, I was freaking out. And uh, on top of that, I was also doing the play in the fall musical, so I was pretty worried about time consumption and schedule conflicts. All right, so my original question involved two things I was kind of interested in. I was interested in doing jewelry, maybe making it, something like that. I figured that if I had to do this giant stressful project, I wanted to get something beautiful out of it, like jewelry. Uh, the other thing I kind of was interested in was self-defense and learning how to defend myself in dangerous situations. Uh, I decided to do self-defense because most jewelry makers <coughs> go somewhere warmer during the winter and uh, so I couldn't really get a hold of any I knew and there was a class I could take locally for self-defense so it was pretty easy to get in touch uh, with my mentor that way. Uh, my mentor is Lisa Richardson, she's here today. Um, she was the first person I talked to about the class. I chose her because she's super nice and I thought that learning self-defense from a woman would be more applicable to me. Prior knowledge I had on self-defense was selling cookies as a Girl Scout and taking a two hour long class <laughs> for breaking fingers. <laughs> so I did not remember that very much. I just vaguely knew how to break someone's fingers and that was pretty much my extent of knowledge on self-defense. Uh, I quickly changed my question, which wasn't really a question, it was just like self-defense question mark, um, to how will learning self-defense help me when dealing with authority because I realized I am not good and I don't handle myself and conduct myself in a good manner around authority and um, there's a story that goes with this but I won't tell it. I will just give you a very short version of it. Pizza was thrown, <laughs> police were called and I ran a lot <laughs> and screamed a lot and I didn't even throw the pizza so <laughs> I realized after that point that I basically lose control of all of my emotions and I freak out around authority, especially police. Um, so that's how I kind of decided to change my question. The process I went through. I ended up working with Sensei Lisa Richardson and she is one of the few senseis that works at the dojo for Tracy's Karate and they meet on Wednesdays in the Masonic Hall. It's a class you can take. Immediately walking into class, I knew that the structure of the class was different, especially for me. Uh, there was these... They were all in a circle, and um, they were all just kicking butt. And they were like screaming and like karate kidding it all up in there. And I was like, two hours of Girl Scouts and these kids can kick my butt. And they're like up to here on me. So <laughs> I was a little terrified of that. Not to mention that half of the summer, like half of the kids were summer campers that I had been a summer camp counselor to. So immediately the dynamic changed from me being their authority figure to them being my authority figure because they knew more than I did. 
Um, I struggled with calling people sensei because I didn't understand why they deserved for me to call them sensei. I didn't understand how they were better than I was. <laughs> That's another problem I have with authority is I don't understand why a cop has more power than I do. He's a human, I'm a human, so what makes him different from me? Um, something I learned right away was the DAN rankings, which has a lot to do with authority in the classes. DAN rankings is the ranking system, or basically the belts, like black belt, yellow belt. Yellow belt is the lowest ranking, and they were higher than I was because I was no belt. Um, so DAN rankings were, they definitely played a key role in the authority figures, and uh, yeah. I thought that it would be a good idea to have an interview with a police officer, since I <laughs> struggle with them apparently. And um, so I chose Tim Bland because I know him pretty well. He walks around the halls here. A lot of the kids that go to school here know him. He's super nice, and he was very interested in my senior ex when I mentioned it to him. Um, I <laughs> totally forgot that I was going to interview him. So on top of being nervous uh, by talking to a cop, I was I had like three questions that I had really quickly scribbled down, and they were like, "What's your favorite color, and how does that affect you being a cop?" And they're just like total made-up questions. And uh, in the end, it ended up being a really good interview because after I asked my total like made-up questions, we ended up talking about just things that I love to talk about. We talked about politics. We talked about things like Ferguson, which is a touchy subject with cops. And it really made me see that he, like, he is a person and he has opinions and feelings just like I do, even though sometimes he needs to be an officer in dangerous situations. Um, challenges I faced. So the class had a lot of little rules that I really struggled with um, kind of remembering. They have a certain way you stand, which is your hands behind your back, and it's just a respectful way to stand. You have a certain way you sit, which is you can see the kids sitting there. They all have their legs crossed, and, um, and that was when they were playing like duck, duck, goose. So that was like a casual day, and they all still, every single one of them had their legs crossed. Um, you have to say sensei a lot in that class, which I definitely struggled with because I felt kind of silly calling people sensei. Um, but I realized that these people know more than I do, so I just need to respect them for that and call them sensei because they earned it. I had, like I just said, taking, taking it seriously was a struggle for me because walking in there with like 20 little kids, so cute, in their little geese and like with their black, like, yellow belt and they're like yeah yeah I just like so cute and I couldn't handle myself for like the first two times because I was just like trying to hold it together and not laugh at these little kids who were just kicking butt um, another struggle for me was tin types which was the fall musical uh, it took up a lot of time for me and a lot of times I would have to choose between going to a meeting for the fall musical or doing the class and ultimately I compromised and did the class instead because I knew it was more important for my grade. Uh, the people involved I was challenged with not because they were bad people. In fact, they were like the nicest group of people I've ever met. <laughs> um, but because I was afraid of a lot of them, especially Sensei Kelton who I worked with a lot during this whole process. Sensei Kelton is like really tall, he's like built like a bear, and he was terrifying to me <laughs> when I walked in. And Lisa told me to work with him, and it was like her first day, and I just kind of like slowly crept over and, hey, I'm Greta. I was like, I'm Kelton, nice to meet you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I was terrified, and um, he has a great sense of humor, and so that really helped me overcome my fear <laughs> of Sensei Kelton. Um, so the people involved was more of a just kind of getting over my own fears of just large men that could take me down and women that could kick my butt and I just needed to realize that these people were trying to help me and they weren't going to kick my butt. <laughs> um, the physical aspect was a challenge just because a lot of times I was very tired. I would go home and I'd immediately go to sleep for like two or three hours and then the minute I'd wake up I'd have to rush over to the class so I wasn't late. Um, I was worried about getting injured. I was worried about hurting somebody else. I really shouldn't have been worried about hurting somebody else because I realized like two days in there, they're really well trained. They know what they're doing and um, I shouldn't have been worried about me hurting them but more. I'm kicking my butt. So, yeah. 
What did I learn during this time? Uh, I learned that there is actually a lot of types of karate. And I thought that it was more of like karate is one thing and you just learn karate, like the karate kid. <laughs> I <laughs> wasn't very knowledgeable coming into this. Um, but there are five specific, specific, <laughs> specific types of karate that Tracy's practices and I love them all, but I put my first one is my favorite one. It's called the keto and that's joint manipulation and all of these are just what they sound like. <laughs> Joint manipulation is manipulating the joints like the knees, the fingers, the knuckles, the wrists, any of that uh, to cause pain. So I really liked that one because <laughs> it sounded evil. Uh, jiu Jitsu was my second favorite. That's grabs and throws and exactly, that's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, people grabbing you by your clothes, by your hands, and then you kind of just throw them. Throwing, which throwing is basically, um, you'll see a picture of it, but there, there was a lot of armor, kind of, foam armor that they had to wear for throwing, so I didn't really get to do a lot of throwing just because I didn't get that armor and I was more comfortable not doing it anyways because it looked really intense, uh, but yeah. <laughs> judo is the next one I did. Uh, judo is just partner submission. It's working with somebody and you know making them submit. <laughs> Karate is something with katas, which I will explain. It's in my terminology. Savat, and I didn't know it was called this until like three days ago, but it's French foot fighting, and it sounds really fancy and cool, and it's basically just any kicks that I learned during this time, and I was, I didn't even, I just think it's funny, that's called French foot fighting, it's like, ha ha, but um, the terms that I learned, like right off the bat, I learned these on my first day talking with Lisa and talking with Sensei Kelton. Um, I learned that katas are prearranged kicks, blocks, and strikes. Basically, a kata, you have to learn a certain number of katas to get a certain rank in the Dan ranking. Um, to get to yellow belt, which is the first belt you can achieve, you have to know, I think, one kata. And each kata has like five or six steps in it, so little steps. One kata, the first step would be like a punch of the throat. Whereas the fifth step would be like a punch of the throat, punch of the stomach, punch of the throat, punch of the stomach, kick, punch, like several little steps in one little step and like one. It's really hard to explain, but um, they get more complicated as you go down. Especially, I mean, when you get into the upper katas, they get really complicated. I was unable to learn my kata just because I was so very <laughs> overwhelmed with the play and uh, all of that and just school and stuff. So I just didn't have enough time to learn that. <laughs> unfortunately. I learned that sensei means teacher and that was a really important thing for me to learn because when I was struggling with calling somebody sensei and giving them that kind of respective title I didn't understand why they deserved it but I realized that sensei is not necessarily a title so much as a technical term it just means teacher and they were teaching me so it made sense for me to call them sensei. Uh, ooh. <laughs> A gi is a uniform, and you can see here, this is Mallory's uniform. Um, she's a black belt, but you can see there that it's kind of made out of rough canvas material. It's what all the kids wear. I didn't order one because I knew I'd only be doing this for like a certain amount of time. It's made out of a rough canvas material because that way it's more durable and it won't rip while you're throwing or practicing in any way. Uh, a key eye. <laughs> no one really knows how to spell that. So we just kind of gave it our all and <laughs> spelt it like that. But a kiai is when you do a certain move and you yell while you do it. And I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about, but all the kiais I learned, and it's kind of funny to me, all the kiais for each person is different. So like, I think Kenzie's sounds like ice. Uh, mine sounds like Aya, like an outcast song or something. Um, <laughs> they're different and they're really just a distraction because if somebody's attacking you and you suddenly start yelling, they're going, what is this person doing? Maybe I shouldn't be attacking them if they're screaming and yelling. And, um, so I read Living the Marsh Away by Forrest E. Morgan, and that book really talks about how learning self-defense and learning karate and martial arts is not just like a hobby, it's a way of life. And it's how you respect yourself and others and how you practice honesty and um, just fairness in all things. And that really, it's very nice to read because it was like, 
I'm learning how to be honest and fair when I'm learning how to like punch someone in the throat and it's just very nice to, to hear that. Um, yeah. <coughs> so I'm going to do a demo, but first I'm going to talk about some pressure points. Uh, I learned pressure points from Lisa, but I learned a lot of stuff from Sensei Kelton when I would talk to him during the dojo times. So um, his, like, one quote that I took from him that always kind of stuck with me the whole time was, the final goal is to always get home in the end. Like, never, you can do whatever it takes, but you need to get home at the end of the night. Okay. And um, so that really stuck with me because Though you may be hurting somebody, you're saving yourself. And you need to do what it takes so that you're safe at the end of the night. And the person is attacking you, so you need to focus on your own safety while you're kind of bending them off. OK. <laughs> Pressure points. So I made this little guy here. I call him Frank. Um, we'll go over <laughs> Frank's pressure points. So pressure points, these are just a few, especially with men. Um, the shins, if you drag, I don't know if any of you guys have ever dropped something down your shins and it's kind of just, ugh, it hurts. <laughs> um, you can easily do that with your foot and with power and it will hurt the person, it'll distract them. It'll even, if they're choking you, it'll loosen them up, that's important. And the top of the foot, very easy just to stomp down on the top of somebody's foot. Simple, painful, and it'll do the job. So now I'm going to ask my sensei, Lisa Richardson, to come up and we're going to do some demonstrations. Okay. So we're going to do how to kind of hurt somebody if maybe they're shaking your hand too long and you feel uncomfortable. You don't have to break their fingers, but it's a good way to cause them pain and maybe just make them back up. So I'm holding her hand. As you can see, she's kind of pulling me along. I'm going to grab her thumb and good, good, good. push it in. It hurts. And I'm not hurting her like really hard in a way. And I'm going to show you seconds. And she'll back off if you feel that uncomfortable with that. So we're going to do wrist grabs. There's two different wrist grabs that I like to do. I learned this on my first day when talking to Lisa. And I really liked it. Um, so we'll do the one-handed wrist grab. And I'll just show you guys. So basically, she's trying to get me to go somewhere, and I don't want to go. So I'm going to reach in with a lot of force, twist out and pull out. And this can end in two different ways. You can either come back and punch, or you can use your elbow. That will hurt a person, and they'll back off if you elbow them in your face. So what if somebody's grabbing you with two wrists? Maybe she wants me to go in her van and like, eat candy or something. I'm probably going to kick her in the groin or in the knee, that will loosen her up. If I twist out, pull up, and then I can just end it with a punch, another kick, punch the throat, punch the stomach, either one works. So I'll just do that quickly again. Good. Seconds. It's so easy, and I was just amazed by this. I thought it was gonna be really complicated when I first took this class, but it wasn't, and I was so happy that it wasn't. I was really worried about that. Um, so we're gonna do coming from behind. I'm going to do it slowly. So, so I'm going to loosen her up, like I said. I'm going to go down her shin, kind of peel her fingers off, pull, rest her elbows on my shoulders, and then I'm going to lift. That's going to pull her arms down. It's going to hurt her elbows or break them. So we'll do that quickly again. Good. All right. Um, and then the last one is the Aikido shirt, shirt grab. Aikido is the joint manipulation, and uh, I like this one. So I'm just twisting her wrist. I'm using my other hand, keeping it on my shirt, and I'm going to push her down with my elbow. It's important, and I didn't get this at first, it's important to not go down yourself, because you don't want to go down on the ground with the person attacking you. Good. All right. And that was my demo. Thank you, Lisa. All right, so let's wrap this up. <laughs> um, my conclusion, so what and why does this matter? This matters because uh, just, I mean, if you keep in mind Murphy's Law, anything that can happen will happen. And it's very easy to get into a dangerous situation quickly and not know how to get out of it. And so I'm really happy and I feel way more confident now that I know how to protect myself. Um, so that's, that's 
a very big confidence builder, knowing that you can help your friends or yourself if you're in a situation that's dangerous. Um, how did this experience help me personally? <coughs> personally, I learned through talking to Sensei Kelton, Officer Tim, Lisa, any of the authority figures I talked to, and from reading those two books, um, just I learned that they're people, the authority figures. Every morning they kiss or hug somebody they love goodbye and they feel things and they have opinions just like I do and um, even though they may wear a uniform or they may have to use that uniform to control a dangerous situation, they are people and I didn't know that a lot when I was dealing with them in other situations um, so I kind of assumed that they were going to do their best to like, ruin my life or something. So. Um, I feel a lot more comfortable, a lot more confident around authority figures. I don't think I'll ever be fully comfortable around them just because I don't know, it's kind of ingrained in my soul. But um, I feel a lot better around them now. I have a lot of thanks. Um, thank you to my sensei, Lisa Richardson, for dealing with my schedule and for just dealing with all my shenanigans and how it kind of I didn't take it seriously at the beginning. Thank you so much for that. I would not have been able to do this without you. Um, thank you to Tracy's Karate and all the senseis that helped me through this. I can't explain enough how lucky I am that there was a class nearby that I could take. I know a lot of people struggle to find sensei, or <laughs> to find senses. A lot of people struggle to find mentors and people to work with. Thank you to Ms. Cullens for all of her feedback. Thank you to my parents for getting me from point A to point B. Thank you to my grandma for existing, because I love my grandma. Uh, thank you to Officer Tim Bland, because he's really awesome, and I'm so glad that I got to talk to him. And thank you to MDIEEF for the grant. Okay, at this point, we'll ask for any clarifying questions of Greta. Carly was first. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Gotta be fair, okay. man. Um, Greta, why have you decided to not continue doing this karate? Honestly, I would love to continue doing karate, but uh, schedule-wise, I really can't. The class is on the same night as theater, and I can't give up theater. Um, I'm in a position that I need to be there as much as possible. Otherwise, I would really love to do this, and I might in the future once I'm not in high school, and maybe if I take a gap year, I will. So you kind of shared your struggles with authority, mm -hmm. but I've always viewed the role you play in the theater group as an authority figure. Yes. Has this informed like how you act in your role? It definitely has. I thought of that halfway through, how um, I'm, a th I'm an authority figure, and it's weird that I don't like authority, but I'm an authority figure myself. Um, it definitely has. I view it differently now. Like I make decisions and I think about the people and how it's going to affect the people behind the decisions more before I make them. In your mind, when you use the word authority, mm -hmm. is it? At first, I thought it was just going to be the man and the or woman in the police uniform. Yeah. But you might want to reflect on yeah. why it is that authority makes you feel like you want to punch him in the face. You know? <laughs> like it's a I don't think it makes me feel like I want to punch him in the face. It makes me feel very uncomfortable very suddenly when dealing with authority. And it's not just police officers, I should have mentioned that. It's principals, it's teachers who are reprimanding me or editing a paper even. It's anything of that nature. And it just makes me so uncomfortable and basically lose control of all of my emotions. <laughs> so. I, I have much better control now, and I feel much more comfortable just because I think that this was a big confidence builder for me, and uh, I think I learned a lot about authority figures and how they're people too. Yeah. How um, my, that all of this learning, this is incredibly wonderful personal learning for yeah. you, I'm so excited to be <laughs> part of this and hearing it. How might all of this learning impact some of the choices that you are going to be making in the next, you know, couple years or five years? Um, well, I think that if I were to see a friend in trouble, um, I would reevaluate whether I'm going to run away. My fight or flight system has been like reset. I know I have much more confidence in my fight um, and 
I mean, flight is the easy way out. And I think that I can help people and I can help myself in the future, going to college, I think meeting new people, being in somewhere where I don't know where I am, new places, I have more confidence going into those new places knowing that I can handle myself mm -hmm. around authority and just into dangerous situations. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Any other clarifying questions? Awesome. So at this point, we'll ask the audience to step out in the hallway.